Begin Podfix Network transmission. In three, two, one. You're fly fishing in a stream, getting those ankles wet. Or deep in the ocean, casting nets. Fish nerds. Fish nerds. Fish nerds. It's a podcast. I'm exhausted. Holy smokes. Today's the 28th of November, 2021. Just two days left for National Podcast Posting Month after this one. And I couldn't do it without the help of John King, the crappy hippie uh, from the Lord Love Podcast, longtime friend of the Fish Nerds, longtime correspondent, good friend, and a great overall human. He is back again with your National Podcast Posting Month tip of the day. We're doing 30 this month. We're number 28 in, and I can barely stay awake anymore. Let's talk about Counting Down with John King, the crappy hippie. Hey, everybody, it's Crappy Hippie, your tree-hugging redneck from eastern Kansas, and I'm here with another tip for Napod Pomo, trying to help Clay finish this thing out. All right, now, every time I listen to one of the tips on Napod Pomo, we get a little countdown uh, from Podfix, and that gave me an idea to do Counting Down. Okay, I'm doing this on behalf of my good buddy, Todd Birdie Birdsell. He is the chief field tester for glasswater angling. And Todd is up a tree right now hunting deer, so he hasn't got time to come in here and do this piece for me. But this is a guy that takes counting down to a real art. What is counting down? Well, it's simply a method to avoid snags and stay in the fish zone. Uh, it's a simple method to keep your lure at the same depth or a consistent depth over the course of a retrieve. Now, I've done countdown before. Of course, most fishers that have fished as long as I have have tried it, have used it. But some people can take this technique and really, really make it work again and again and again until it's almost just part of their fishing psyche. I mean, they just kind of do it automatically. And uh, Todd Birdie Birdsell is one of those people. So what is it? It's very simple. You take, let's just say you have a jig and you throw out and you count down until that jig hits the bottom. And let's say it hits the bottom on 10. Well, it hits the bottom on 10, but you're feeling a lot of rocks, maybe a lot of snags. Um, so you decide to drop it down to the count of nine. And now every now and then you're just clicking maybe across the top of something. So maybe eight and a breath. And now you're cruising right over the top of these rocks and these little bits of brush and these little um, rocks that are standing up and so on. Your lure's in the zone, but you're not hanging up. You know, there's certain times where you bottom bump and you spend more time tying on new baits than you actually do fishing. So counting down is a way to get you in that fish zone, but do it without fancy equipment and do it without having to lift from bottom up. You just go top down and keep the uh, retrieve consistent over a count. Anyway, it's super effective on rocky areas. It's super effective on weed beds because if you have a nice even weed bed, you folks up north have really nice weeds. We have hydrilla and milfoil and the stuff that grows in all crazy, crazy ways. And counting down can be worked on that at certain times of year. But if you have a nice even bed of, oh, I don't know what, you know, cabbage, pickle grass, whatever this stuff's called, you can use a countdown to retrieve that lure at an inch off the top of that stuff and bring in uh, strike after strike after strike and of course uh, sunken brush or humps and and then in current too uh, it's a great retrieve okay i mentioned that you're going to be counting down to get close to that cover to get close to that habitat to get close to that living space or feeding space where the fish and forage are living and moving around oh but count down Totally awesome on suspended fish. You already thought of that. I know, I can tell, I can tell. But we talk a lot about suspended fish on fish nerves because a lot of us are pan fishers, and, and but also black bass and a lot of other fish will suspend. So the other day, we were over 25 feet of water, and yet all the fish were hanging out right at 20 feet. So you're going to get your bait to go down, down, count down, and retrieve, count down, and retrieve, count down, and retrieve till you catch that first fish and then remember your countdown and you can even pull out your sharpie and mark your line but if you just basically remember your countdown and let's say it was fit the countdown was 15 and you got your hit at 10 you just count down 10 every time as long as you keep in mind the weight the buoyancy everything else so like if you're using a a straight jig, let's say an eighth ounce jig, that's going to have a, a, a drop rate a lot more than some other countdown bait. So you may have to uh, adjust your approach if you switch to a different sort of bait. And uh, while we're on the subject, let's talk about what kind of baits really work well 
for this technique. Uh, jigs are fantastic, and underspin jigs are fantastic. Overspin jigs or spinner baits or beetle spins are fantastic. And of course, spoons lend themselves well to this technique because they'll fall at a consistent rate. They have a lot of action on a slow retrieve. They can be lifted up and back into the zone if they drop a little too low. They all have a bit of lift of their own. A jig has a tail, skirt, or whatever that gives it some natural lift. Now you add an underspin, you get more natural lift. You add an overspin, you get a lot more natural lift because the blade is over the top, lifting the lure up. And of course, spoons have that beautiful side to side, just nice uh, wobble going down and, and and, and you can calculate their rate of descent fairly easily. But really, now, what about hard baits? Well, we can get into that. The absolute king of the countdown hard baits is the countdown rapala. And I don't know who hasn't had one of these, who didn't have one, who doesn't have one. Uh, it is still the classic countdown hard bait that you can get, and it works very well at running at a consistent depth. But any sinking crankbait, any lip bait, any lipless crankbait can be counted down. I love lipless cranks. I love blade baits. These are all more rapid sinking baits that can be counted down and will run on an even line uh, through the water. So next time you're getting a lot of snags, count it down and stay just above those snags. Next time you come up against some suspended fish, count that bait down and keep yourself in the fish zone. This has been Crappie Hippie talking about how to count them down. Tight lines and valentines. Peace out. Thanks, John King. I love you. Fish nerds, out of here. Whether you're fly fishing in a stream, getting those ankles wet, or deep in the ocean casting nets, fish nerds, fish nerds, fish nerds, it's a podcast. Just for the hell of it. Fry it in a basket or broiled in a pan. Eat it raw like you're in Siam. Fish nerds. Fish nerds. Fish nerds. It's a podcast.